dating after 50 and 60 and 70, and I have so many questions. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the podcast for gay men over 50. I'm Tom Burke, and I haven't been on a date since 1987. That sounds like a you problem, and I am Michael <laughs> Foley, <laughs> here to say that. Fantastic. And what, you were on a date last night, I'm sure? Um, well, define date. Okay, that's what we're going to do later. Um, okay. <laughs> so, before we get into dating, and Michael is going to have to lead us through this, because Michael is the guy who's out there dating. Uh, what's up, Mike? What's up happening with you? What's in your world? Oh, I finally had three days in a row off, and all I did was sleep. It was awesome. Nice. I didn't get out of bed until two o'clock on Sunday. Wow. I know. Wow. I did wake up a couple of times and went, no, just not ready. Okay, cool. And it's, such a, it's such a joy to be able to do that. And someone had a trip outside of Palm Springs, didn't they? Yes, I was in New York for uh, a few days, more than a few days. It was great just to get back to New York City. You know, it was, uh, you too are from the East Coast. Uh, I used to live in Manhattan. And it was pouring rain for a couple days. And that first, like, okay, uh, the, got the umbrella, and then you're on the street walking with thousands of people with their umbrellas. And you're like, it, it took me about one tenth of a second and I was back, you know? I was like, yeah. oh yeah, boom, boom, <laughs> shoving people out of my way, getting those umbrellas stuck in my eye and just be like, hey, I'm walking here, get out of here. It was great. And it's amazing how it's like this synchronized dance oh, totally, that everybody just right? bobs and weaves and it's, it's yeah. this instinctual thing. And, and you yeah. can totally tell the tourists. Oh my God, yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> it's so yeah. great. Uh, but yeah, it was great to be there, but it's great to be home as well. And it's great to be back here doing our podcast and talking with you and talking to all of our amazing listeners out there who we so appreciate. And this season, we've been talking about relationships. And what better thing to discuss among relationships than how a relationship starts? And that's dating. So let's go, Michael. <laughs> dating. Uh, hmm. Dating. Hmm. Well, first of all, Thank you for doing, you, as anyone who listens knows, I love a good list and I love some good statistics. And while I was away, Michael got me some of those. And so let's just start with that because it, I was a little shocked. Um, I was also a little shocked of where the study came from. You know, it used to be like study in GQ or a study yeah. in whatever. Or The Advocate or what, like Frontiers yeah. or something. This, yeah. But we have gotten to this point in life. The study is from AARP. <laughs> oh, my God. Aww, oh, Grandpa. Yeah. Um, all right. So this study said 57% um, of gay men over 45 reported being single. That's a lot of single guys out there. It's a lot of single guys. percent I know we are living in this little bubble here in Palm Springs, and it seems, at least to me, that everybody's in a couple. Everyone is either married or... It, I don't know if you're finding that as well out there. Um, probably not as so much as I am, because I'm married, and so... Oh, no, I find yeah. it. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, and But though, even when we were living uh, in Los Angeles, I think it was just our circles were just all coupled or married uh, gay men. So this 57% means there's a lot of people out there. Not all of them date, but that's a lot of dating going on. It is, but not in Palm Springs. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you're right. There are a ton of couples here. Yeah. And... A lot of them have open relationships, which is just not a playground I choose to get on the seesaw in. Yeah. On. Yeah, I, um, I would imagine that I would just, be so messy. Yeah, because it's like, you know what? I want mine. Like, yeah. it, it's challenging enough, and I, believe it or not, still believe in monogamy. So We were at a fundraiser a couple of weeks ago, and... Uh, we're introduced to this couple. And then, of course, when they leave, everyone's like whispering and telling the real stories about who they were. So they were in a throuple. 
And the one guy didn't really want to do it, but the other guy did want to do it. They brought in this third. The third supposedly fell in love with the one. The other guy got divorced. So, you know... Tale as old as time. Too messy for me. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually have friends from L.A. who live here now who have just gotten involved in that arena about a year ago. And um, they're going through some major hell right now. Yeah. Um, the actual anchor couple. Um, because, again, what always happens is you're always attracted to one more than the other. And then drama ensues. And one of them is so beyond resentful. It makes me a little sad because I love them both. Yeah. And um, yeah, I spent an evening with him about two weeks ago and I, I just couldn't because I'll crack the nut. I will. I question. That's my that's my thing. I do. I love to talk. I love to have conversation with people. I love to get in there and talk about stuff that matters, you know, um, and the level of resentment that came out from him because this wasn't his idea. And ironically enough, the third person who is in the relationship now is more attracted to him. So yeah. it's just this, it's just this really weird dynamic. And it, um, it makes me sad because like I said, I love them both and I, sure. I, I can see they're both struggling. All right. Well, I am not like you who uh, does the whole questioning thing. Uh, I am that kind of reserved waspy person who never talks about themselves which is why i'm loving today because i'm talking i'm asking you all these questions i want to know about dating because like i said at the top of this i've not been on a date since 1987 wow yeah right that's crazy uh, yeah right um, that was when your id was printed on a stone tablet right <laughs> exactly <laughs> well no i was number four Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was easy that way. I was five, so oh, I cool. can't really say much. There you go. Um, all right, so dating. Today, as a guy over 50, I wouldn't even know where to begin. So let's start there. Um, I know about the apps because you told me Sniffies and Grinder and all that stuff. You enlightened me on all of that. Is that where we go to find dates, or is that just a sex thing? Do, do you use dating apps? Um, I have used dating apps. Okay. Um, but they didn't work for me, because it, the people who I wound up meeting and connecting with, and usually there's a coffee date, um, seem to really want a relationship and are willing to force the square peg into the round hole. And that's not me. You know, if there's if something doesn't click, if there isn't some sort of chemistry, um, which you usually know right off the bat. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you remember dating back then that you'd go on dates and there was either something that is inexplicable. It's just a chemistry thing. It's a, I don't it, I don't even right. you know what it, what is that? Do you know what that is? Like electricity happens, right? Um, OK, so stop there for a second. Is it different than the sexual electricity? I think it's everything all together, where there is that interest in, oh my God, I really find this person attractive. But then there's all these other levels that come into play. Like, they're funny. They seem intelligent. They seem to have their shit together. And because the, the, the sex thing is probably the easiest one, you know. Okay. On, on just the physical, basic, aesthetic value. Right. Um, but it's when the other stuff that clicks for me that makes it, like, you know, just it brings it to a whole nother level. Well, there has to be that, that initial attraction, right, uh, which is physical. But because we're taking this f away from just sex, uh, now into dating... The, yeah, there has to be so much more. All right, so if the apps don't work for you, then how else does somebody find somebody to date? Well, again, Palm Springs represents a lot of challenges because there right. are so many people in relationships and they're open relationships and they're like, oh, my partner's okay with it. I'm like, well, eh, but I'm not. Yeah. So um, All right, well, when there is a really... higher demographic here of married folk but right. you know i meet people at the supermarket okay or you know if i go out to a bar and you know 
strike up a conversation with somebody. And so it's still basically the same ways to meet people. It's just that the pool seems smaller here for the single guy. Okay. Um, uh, and it's a very transient town, let me add that. Yeah, so a lot right. of singles will come into town. Um, but, you know, it's hard to develop a relationship with somebody who lives in another state. Okay. So, I, well, I would imagine that it would be then the same whether you're in Palm Springs, North Dakota, or somewhere else, that you're meeting people either through an app, through, you know, like you said, at the grocery store, or when you go out to a bar and you meet somebody, or I'm sure also through friends, you know, you meet people. I don't know if if that worked. Like, when we were young in our 20s, yeah, you would meet someone through your friends because they were everyone seemed to be single and mingling and whatever. But like I said, most of our friends are all in these couples or you know, they've lost their husband or they've gotten divorced. And I, I don't know about you. I'm not dating them, but I would be wary of people that are divorced <laughs> at first, you know, like, why'd you get divorced? Yeah, for me, it would depend on how long they were divorced. Because, yeah. you know, we've all been in relationships that regardless of our best intention, don't work. Sure. So the fact that someone is divorced doesn't isn't a red flag for me. Um, but, you know, again, I ask questions. I'm like, what happened? Yeah. What, you know, and it's what it is a red flag for me is when somebody blames their partner for everything. And oh, I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what uh, I'm supposed to do? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, no, that's never the case because there are two people in the relationship, right? right? So there has to be on both sides a, a level of responsibility that's taken. Sure. Yeah. For, you know, um, for the relationship not working. And I think that's the sign of somebody who, if they're like, you know, I, I own my part of it. Um, I think to me, that's a sign of somebody who is like, oh, now I'm intrigued. Okay. Tell me more. Cool. All right. So now that you've met the person or you have, you know, whatever, connected with this person and you're going to go on your date is it different now that you're over 50 like what is a date where do you go on dates out to dinner to yeah. a movie you know the same same that, well, that does that hasn't changed okay because um, i was wondering you know yeah is that a different thing um i can i tell a quick story about me when i was younger dating of course because it's kind of funny so I have to really go back hundreds of years. And <laughs> I had just, I had gotten back into Manhattan. I was at a party out in uh, the Hamptons and we used to take helicopters out there at the time. And I had just gotten back, but I had to go to an opening of something. So I looked a mess. So I had a, a bandana around my hair and I went to this opening, right? And I'm standing there like in some flowy linen, whatever outfit. And I do know that I had on orange espadrilles which is important to the story. But (laughs) this man walked up to me and he said, I see you in waving wheat. And I was just like, okay, thanks, great. You know, walked away from him. He come up to me again. I am envisioning you in waving wheat and blah, blah, blah. He was a painter and he wanted to paint me as somebody in Eastern Europe out in the wheat fields. And I'm like, oh, dude, does this guy look like a wheat field guy? (laughs) You know, whatever. Well, wait, I do have to ask, you did yeah. still have the babushka on your head? I think that's, yes, that's why. And that's why he pictured <laughs> exactly. you in a waving wheat field. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I did go, I sat for him. Uh, he did do this painting of me. Uh, it, it wasn't about me. It was about his painting, but he was just using me as the subject. Um, but he made me eat borscht every time that I was, oh, he was nuts. But he's a famous no. artist, though. Um, okay. Anyway, long, long, long story. He, it eventually was put up in this restaurant um, in New York City over the bar, and it was a humongous painting. And so that period of time I was dating. So I would have people meet me at this bar, and I would just be sitting there in front of my painting. How gross. <laughs> oh, my 
Go but on. I know, I know, I know, I know. But you have to remember, this was back then. And all of us who were working, we would always do things like that. Like my friend Drew Watusi, this female model, did an ad for herpes. And they put it on the subway. You know the ads that were up yes. on the subway? Yeah. yeah. And she used to sit underneath that. <laughs> just, okay, that's funny. It's fun. I know. That I mean, is... Hysterical. Anytime we did a billboard, you had to walk underneath your billboard and stand there and see if anyone noticed. It, we were in our 20s. We were young. But anyway, that was my dating thing. I would have people meet me in front of my humongous picture of me with this sickle in the waving wheat. All right. I know. Wow. That's all the dating wow. stories. I have I so tell. many images in my head right now. <laughs> I'm going to have nightmares tonight. And, Thank you for that. And most of them are really oh sad. Oh, my God. All right. Let's get back to you and dating. So dating... Although I do want to see you in a babushka at some point now. Oh, sure. Uh, next week. I will wear one next week. Sweet. Uh, babushka. It was, a, it was just a... It's like a babushka. No. On my hair. It's a babushka. Okay. If you're Russian, Italian, anywhere in Europe, it's a babushka. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So we go on our dates and we go to dinner or do you like going to movies on for dates though i do because um you just well, can't talk to the person no there's always something before like you know you'll have you'll grab uh, coffee or a quick snack and then you go out to dinner afterwards but it, it what what i like about it is it provokes conversation after the movie okay uh, a conversation that. that might not have been had right you know where you get a different perspective on something sure and i see that definitely as an older person person dating because it's not all about the sex it's not all about like let's get home and just do it or whatever to have those conversations and then you really get to know that person a lot better so okay that's smart didn't think about that yeah um, and I, is, i've done that forever yeah you know you know me in the arc light back in I la yeah do. that, that yeah. was that was my go-to date right place did they have a big picture of you and as babushka up there as well no but i was like Shut the mayor up. of the arc light and cool and walk in the door get hugs and um so i i miss that place still so desperately Aww. but anyway that was my favorite day place it so felt is, safe is there somewhere that you at this age do not want to go on a date a bar okay yeah and, and honestly that is any age if someone suggested going out to a bar on a first date, I would be like, nope, anywhere else. Yeah. Not going to a bar on a first date. Is that because of the noise or because of so many other people? It's like the I would noise, imagine. It's the people, it's the environment, it's the liquor. Because I would prefer to go out on a date with somebody who isn't buzzed. Okay. That's, that's just me. And it, it always has been. Um, you know, yeah. once somebody gets a couple of drinks in them, they're a very different person. Um, and th that's just been my experience and I know it makes a lot of people relax and feel comfortable, but I would rather experience somebody in their uncomfortableness being them. Yeah. And I remember this one. Yeah, never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I told my waving wheat story. You can go. Okay. This one really bad date in LA. Um, mm -hmm. We went out to this really nice restaurant, and this particular person had five martinis Ooh. before the appetizers got there. Okay, that guy's got a problem. And yeah, but um, good that you knew it. You found that out abs right absolutely. away. Absolutely, yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting. Okay. So on these dates, what is something that? Um, like an instant, not a red flag, but the opposite, a green flag. What's a green flag for you in dating? Somebody's able to laugh at themselves. Who doesn't take themselves too seriously. Good. I love that. Um, which again is why I like to ask questions. Um, and sometimes I could see I'm making somebody uncomfortable, especially if you're talking about family or previous relationships. Right. Um, and I always say, if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. And usually they'll like go, no, you know what? I'm going to talk about it. Um, and that's when it, that's, that's when something nice happens because they're, they're willing to open up. Um, yeah. And that's one of the hard things about first dates is that people tend to try to be on their best behavior. Right. 
and uh, I, that, that, that for me is tough. Because it's like, I'd rather see a little bit of messy. Because we know it's there for all of us, right? Well, I could see that as being a younger person, having all those walls and pre pretenses up. But as an older person, you find that as well, that people are always doing this kind of false facade? Yeah, I tend to find it actually more now. Really? Yeah. And I think it's because... You know, a, a lot of us, as we get older, the walls get higher. So, you know, there's a lot of callus there. There's a lot of wound. Um, and for some people, the wall just gets higher. Um, so, Well, that's kind of making me sad. I would think as yeah. you're aging, you're like, oh, you know, fuck it. This is mm -hmm. who I am. Yeah. You know? No. no, and you, I mean, you know those people because of the business you were in. Um, right. Who put up that pretense. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that translates into a dating relationship as well, where it's just like, I have to pretend to be anybody else but me. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know me. I mean, I, you know, it is what it is. You sort of get what you see. I don't, and it, that's taken a very long time for me to get there. Um, but... I, yeah, you know when somebody's just being genuine and when somebody's trying to either impress or, oh, totally. or yeah. deflect. Yeah. And, and for me, I would rather see somebody, again, I, I want to see a little bit of messy. And what if someone shows up and it's all mess? You know, like, I'm putting it all out on the table. Um, oh, see, that's a tough one because it depends on the mess. Like, if they're willing to share and have experienced growth from that mess... It's awesome. If it's yeah. somebody who's sitting in a mud puddle of mess and just doesn't realize that they can get up and walk away from the mud puddle, it's a different, it's a different dynamic. Right. But I love it when people are willing to, to open up and share. Okay. Li you know, it just, it just. And do you, do you find that with, well, obviously not, but I was going to ask, like, do you find that with most men over 50 who are out there dating that they appreciate someone who is genuine and just like here i am this is what you're getting i would hope so you know yeah. i you, you never know yeah. especially if it's a first or just a second date you kind of never know you know what their perspective is um but you know usually after a first date if i want to see somebody again i said I, I would i always say i would really like to do this again if you're open to it you know i don't play that game is he going to call me first? Should I call him first? Should I I'm like, before the night is over, if it's, a, if it's a, a good experience, I'm like, do you want to do it again? And I'm okay if you don't. Because, again, you know, there are, there are situations where just two people don't jive on that particular right. level. Yeah. And that's okay. It's more than okay. Okay. Um, first date. Do you sleep with people on the first date? Is it a normal thing? You know, it's... Um, funny, if it's somebody I'm interested in and it's an actual date date, I tend to like to wait. Yeah. If, it, if it's somebody where, who I click with. But, because um, as I've said in the past, it always goes back to Cher or Barry Manilow. It's in his kiss. <laughs> okay. And you made fun of me wearing a babushka. Uh... Um, yeah, see that whole thing about I, date. I hope people are watching on YouTube because just to see your face when I said that just yeah. makes me so happy. Cool. <laughs> cool. Because um, the kissing is so hugely important. Huge. Okay. Huge. So that's what I, that's we, why I said it's in his kiss. Okay. Do we kiss on the first date? Yes. Okay. Do, is that a norm in this over 50 gay male population? It was always a norm for me. So... I think for a lot of people, that's a yeah. big thing, is, the, is that first kiss. And then usually on the first date, um, I think that's something that happens across the board. Okay, so... I would hope. Um, excuse my teenage boy coming out at the moment, but I'm... Again, it's been a long time for me. Um, <laughs> so when you were on a date in your younger days and, you know, you were interested and, like, that the sparks were happening and, like, do we kiss? Do we not kiss? And like all that excitement, yeah. like 
Is that still around now? It is. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it is. The anticipation of that oh, first kiss. Yeah, that's great. Is the absolute best thing yeah. about a first date for me. That's so fantastic. Yeah. That's... You still get the butterflies. Okay. You're still like, is it time to move in? Should right. I go in for the kid? You know, um, yeah, that's all still there. Okay, so that is making my heart sing here. Because like, that's awesome. Like, those moments were so amazing. Yeah. So great. But I, at this age, I, I have to ask this too, because I don't get it. I mean... Again, I've been married a really long time. At this age, over 50, I don't know how easy I could be getting naked in front of new people all the time. You know, I'd be like, oh, don't touch that. Oh, no, that's that back fat. No, don't touch that. You know, like I would be so self-conscious. Yeah, and that's probably because you haven't been dating. Yeah. But if you have been dating and, you know, you're on and off single, um, you know, if you've had relationships and you're out, right. um, you tend to care less. Okay, that's great. Yeah, it yeah. really is. I'm like, love me, love my love handles. That's just, <laughs> they, they, it's a package deal. <laughs> it's, okay. See, um, that's why I'm like, you know, pumping my husband with vitamins. Like, you are never going anywhere because I cannot <laughs> date. I can't be getting naked in front of people, you know? I, uh, I just don't It does. It, I, you, you, you just... You know, and take this and bring it into another aspect of your life where as we age, you just don't care as much. Yeah, but right? you just said earlier that there are a lot of guys who are still putting up these walls and these pretenses. Yes. yes. And, okay. How, oh, this is a good question. I was question. referring to like body image. Okay. I, th I think you tend to care less. Speaking of body image, and we have talked about this on the podcast before, there are certain men over the age of 50, 60, and 70 that we all have seen the ones who are wearing three sets of Spanx and, you know, their clothes that are appropriate for a 23-year-old and the, the, you know, crazy dye dripping off their faces like Giuliani. Have you ever experienced that where someone starts peeling off their Spanx or anything like that? Because that would be awesome. Fortunately, no. Okay, good. I just, that would be like such a great. And it's interesting because it would be a little, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not like that it would be a lie, but I don't know, to pop off a girdle and all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> have love handles right. is misrepresentation, right. I'm going to say. And because I would have enjoyed the person with the love handles, if I enjoyed the person, well, as opposed yeah. to seeing him pull off a pair of Spanx and it's like one of those cartoons <laughs> where it's like, boing! <laughs> yeah. You mean like when it, I take off my Spanx? Um, I would imagine, though, that you would already have sussed this guy out, you know, in, over dinner or over coffee and go like, oh, yeah, this guy is full of pretense and or pretension or whatever it is and not made that next step i was just wondering it because i don't know just and again if it is somebody i'm interested in i'm more than happy to wait till like yeah a couple of dates to actually sleep together because it, again it's one of those you know, like i said the first kiss that anticipation yeah there's also something that builds with that there's an excitement of like you know when you actually do it i'm so, so freaking old-fashioned in regard to some things, it's scary sometimes. Well, no, that I mean, it's it's great to know that that is still you know out there in the dating world at this age. Um, do you think at this age you also are more? Ex well, I think you just said this though that you're more accepting of somebody's body faults, or yeah. you're not looking at someone and going like, "Oh, I'm going, I want to date that guy because he's got perfect abs." Oh, like, I, that's I, not anything, right? No, it's ironic. I never really wanted to date somebody with perfect abs. Why not? I, it just, I don't have a type. Uh -huh. Like I, I have dated every ethnic background, every, I mean, I, it just across the board, it usually just depends on the person and something clicking. So I don't have a type going into anything. Um, but somebody with the perfect body uh, this is going to be a, a, a blanket stereotype, and I don't mean it to be, but um, 
there's either a, a, a level of insecurity that they feel they have to, to, to maintain that, or maybe a narcissism that never attracted them. Somebody who wants to spend three hours a day at a gym right. and not eat a piece of pizza or a roll at dinner. And, you know, kudos to, kudos to them because yeah. I don't have that kind of restraint. <laughs> If right. I see bread and butter, it's I'm going in. But um, yeah, I don't mean that to sound as judgmental as it did, but I couldn't find any other words. No, I don't think I it's just, judgmental. I just don't want that. I, I, I would never been attracted to that perfect body. Right. Um, okay. Uh, there are, though, in this gay population over 50, there are these subsets that only kind of date within their subset, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's the the bears who are into bears and, you know, I don't know all the subsets because I'm, I'm at Cloistered home. Cloistered away with yes. your... Yes. <laughs> Living this... <laughs> Really sad existence. And they both ring the bells at five o'clock and six o'clock. So. We do. Um, but but you do find that, that there are these subsets that only date yeah. their, you know, these particular types, yeah. which is, you know, fine as long as you know that. And um, the muscle guys tend to date the muscle guys anyway, which I've never been, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So now you mentioned earlier that you're not dating to find a relationship, but there are guys that are dating to find relationships. Um, Let me, if that was the, if that was the implication you got, I got to rephrase that. I am dating to have a relationship. I would love to have a relationship, but it's going to be with somebody I click with as opposed to just somebody who happens to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there are a number of guys out there dating who are just, I need to be in a relationship. Yeah. There are those relationship guys. I, I know them. Um, and do you find them out in the dating world as well? Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, they're, yeah, they've always been there. Yeah. And, you know, they always will because there are people who need to have somebody. And that's awesome. Um, but... Yeah, I would just, I, I kind of, if, if I'm going to put that much effort into something, I want it to be somebody who there's a little bit of magic with. A little bit of, I like romance. I like. I thought you were going to start singing Barry Manilow's magic song, because then I would have to have left. Could, you mean, could it be? No, I, I was actually going to break out into a song from Beauty and the Beast. That's where I was going with that one. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so. But there are guys out there, especially with what we heard from the AARP, that there are so many single men over the age of 45, as they say. Uh, there's a ton of guys out there who don't want to be in relationships. Absolutely. They're, they feel like they're done. Because I've gone on dates with you know, th them as well. And they're just like, yeah, I, I have no desire to be in a relationship. So are they... But they, but they date. So are they... Yes. Are they just like dating all kinds of guys? Do they just like the experience of dates? I don't, I'm not understanding, like, if you don't want to be in a relationship, why are you out there dating? It's like being at a buffet where you got to sample a little bit of everything. But isn't, isn't that then just go to one of the sex apps and just have sex with people? Or is it... See, I don't understand. See, with the sex apps... Um... There is a kamikaze nature to it, where it is what it is, you're in, you're out. Um, but I do think, I do think people... It's just so not my world, I just don't get it. I do think there are people who want companionship or, you know, to make a connection with another human being, they just don't want to be in a relationship with them. Yeah. And that's more than okay. Because believe me, as some, you know, somebody who's been single for a, a while now, I think my last substantial relationship was right before COVID. Um, I can understand that because you get a little tired, you know, of just yeah. like, here we go again. You know, and you, it, it's, um, it could be exhausting. So I can understand people who are like, you know what, I'm just going to date, keep it casual and sort of 
be the bee and bounce around to different flowers and pollinate everywhere. Do you like the dating experience? It's a 50-50 split. When it's a good date, it's great. When it's a bad date, it's not so great. But, but can you just chalk it up to, well, at least I got out and I did something? Absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, my, my instinct is to go, no, I'm, I'm not going to bother. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where I want to go. So I can totally understand why people just get fed up with it. But um, I push myself. Because yeah. I know, I know, I am, I. This is just me. I am better when I'm coupled. You know, it gets you out of yourself. Yeah. Um, it's always a wonderful thing to do something for someone else, which I love to do. Um, so yeah, I. That's just me. That's 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 what I want. So I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Have you experienced some of those serial daters who are just out dating, no relationship, yes. no, we're not going uh -huh. farther than this? Yeah. So how long do the dates, like, do you date for a month and then he moves on? Do you... Well, like, you, so usually, because again, I ask questions. Uh huh. Um, after the first or second date, I sort of like to know so, where somebody's coming from. So what are your thoughts on relationships? What are your thoughts on, you know... What do you, what are you looking for? And more often than not, people will let you know. Because there are some people who I've dated who said, you know, if I'm going to be in a relationship, it's going to be in an open relationship. And then for me, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome. We're just going to be friends. Yeah. Or if it's somebody who's like, I'm not into a relationship, that's awesome. It gives me the opportunity to tell them what it is I want and then say, so... Let's just be friends, because that is right. absolutely fine with me. All right. That's a very mature thing. Uh, do you find that that happens more now at this age than it did younger, where someone says, this is what I'm looking for up front? I prod, so okay. <laughs> I get to it. it I, yeah. I get there. Because again, I don't want to be wasting my time, and I don't want to be wasting somebody else's time. So probably... Since my mid to late 30s, when I finally became a little bit more healthy in regard to relationships, because I was that person who bounced from relationship to relationship, because I felt finding someone else who fulfilled me would make me whole. And so, big reason why they never worked. Right. Or I would always find somebody who was incredibly dysfunctional and needed me, um, which again, that's why it didn't work. <laughs> so, um, well, I'm sure yeah. those people are still out there, right? The like, have you been on a date where like, you're like, whoa, this is a really dysfunctional person and yeah. I need to end this immediately. Yeah. Well, I don't end it immediately, but I, I, I like, I like to make the person feel comfortable in their dysfunction and not, it's funny. I just had this conversation with somebody maybe four or five days ago who shared something with me and you could tell he felt he was really hesitant to talk about it. And I said to him, to try and make it easier for him to share, I said, you know what? We all experience shame. And that's the problem with it. If we keep it, it just makes it worse. I said, if you share it, you open the closet and you turn on the light and you realize the boogeyman's not there. And he was like, wow, thank you for allowing me the space to share this. And it was, it was a really great moment, I think, for both of us. Cool. Um, and he was like, you're absolutely right. I feel ashamed of this, and I know I shouldn't. Right. You know, I'm a grown man. <laughs> why, why would I be ashamed of this particular? I said, because you're human. Because we, we, we all do it. It's, it's pushing through that shame and going, oh, you know what? Yeah, this is me. Okay. Right? Sure. Great. Um, all right. So dating, anything else I'm missing on, on dating after 50? Uh, I guess it's not really all that different than it's dating not. as a younger person. Yeah, right? it's really not. Um, you know, and that's the thing about, we have to remember as we age as well, things are still the same. Yeah. Our emotions, our reactions to them, those feelings again of that anticipation of the first kiss 
I'm going to keep going back to that because it's such an awesome yeah. thing. If we allow that to be, as opposed to be afraid of it and going, oh, I don't want that. Um, I'm I'm so glad that that's still yeah out there. It's um, it's it 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 what makes me so happy. That, sweet. Yeah. Um, you know, one of my favorite segments that we do on our show is called the Savage Side Eye. This is the moment where we get to, you know, give a little side eye to somebody that's bugging your, bugging us or doing something we don't like. But as long as we're talking about dating and all your dating experiences, I'd love you to sh- throw a little shade over uh, onto a date that you might have had. A little side. Do you have a side eye that you could kind of? No names, please. But oh, no names. Like a really but, but, bad date. I oddly, would love to. Hear oddly it enough, about. this is something that has happened. Throughout the years, regardless of age, okay, and still continues to. Um, men out there, if you're on a date with somebody, focus. Stay engaged in that moment. Don't be the little doggy sitting in the window, the bobblehead, where you know you get whiplash as other people walk by that you're cruising while you're sitting there with somebody else. Uh, yeah. Or here's a big one, and this is obviously something that's recent. Don't open grinder or scruff on a date. Are it's you kidding? It's so tacky. It is so Seriously? tacky. Seriously? No, I'm, I am. It, it has happened a couple of times, and you know, I I have OCD, so I like to sit with my back to a wall. Yeah. So usually, if I'm out with somebody, I have to get up and go behind them if I need to go to the bathroom. And there have been a number of instances where I come back to the table and they're on their phone. Oh, and no. they have grinder or scruff open. <laughs> oh, no. And I call him out. Dude, I oh. call him out. I'm like, dude, really? And he's like, well, I had a notification. And I always take my phone out because it's grinder or scruff. You get notifications all the time. And I like go, so do I. You know what? I didn't open it because I'm here with you. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's so crazy. I would be livid. Yeah. I'm, I'm not pissed. livid. It, it makes me laugh. I'm <sighs> like, are you serious? Like, you well, can't devote an hour and a half or two hours and stay focused, even when somebody gets up to go to the bathroom. Okay, but luckily for <laughs> you, that is the big light on that red flag of oh, like, yeah. yeah, no, this guy is not worth no. dating, you know? And then, you know, usually it's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, you know what? It's all good. It's all good. I, don't, I honestly don't care. I just find it fascinating Yeah, that you can't stay focused on a single person and i get it our phones have become like a part of our our body yeah and you know open facebook why you on your well, scrub why you do you have to be on your phone, phone at all um i have you done that when somebody bathroom, when, when somebody gets up and goes to the bathroom i'll i'll, I'll open my phone and check uh, facebook no. or check a message or no. but as soon as i see him coming back phone goes away but still, to me, if I saw that, I'd be like, oh, he is on Scruff or Grindr or whatever those are, you know? Um, no. I, like, uh, when I was dating in the dark ages, we didn't have phones, we didn't have all that stuff. Yeah. But I do know that if that attention wasn't on me, no, we're done here. Um, yeah, and again, it's for a short period of time. I don't right? think That's you really need to open Grindr or Scruff. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, yeah, let's throw some uh, side eye <laughs> over it. All of, I'm shocked that you men are out there on a date, also on a sex app. Come on, show I some know. respect, not only for yourself, but definitely for the person you're with. Um, well, we can't <laughs> just talk negative. Uh, we've also started a really great segment for our show, which is the happy gay moment of the week. So to round out those bad experiences of dates, tell us a happy date experience or a happy thing that happens when you are dating. I think one of my favorite dating experiences, because it was like a two-week stint, um, took place in Amsterdam. And it sort of... Wait, 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 wait. It was a two-week date? Yeah, pretty much it became that. A first night, first date? Turned yeah. into two weeks? It was crazy. Spent the and how entire old were you? time how, with him. How old were you? 40-ish. Wow. 
Yeah, okay. it was when the gay games were in Amsterdam. So okay, no, maybe thirty six or thirty eight. Just not um, twenty. Okay. So it was it was opening ceremonies of the games, and Team Montreal was right next to us, and there was this guy who was happened to be there, and we made eye contact, um, exchanged smiles, and then as we were going into the stadium, he came over and we started chatting, and for the next two weeks, it was like that stuff that movies are written about. Like I said, I love romance. Right. It was it was crazy, and let me please, tell you, there were a ton of tears on that. Well, last please day, tell me that he didn't even speak English. He was French Canadian, and he spoke he, English very well. Oh shoot, that would have been so great. That look, we didn't even. But he had a French it just, accent. It was awesome. Yeah. I mean, okay. it really was. We did uh, the gondola rides and museums, and just walked the streets at night, holding hands, and it was. Oh my God, it was just absolutely magic. And, you know, we tried to, he came to LA a couple of times. I went to Montreal, but that's, that's a tough long distance one. Yeah. Um, but still to this day, you know, one of the, one of the sweetest men I've ever met. Um, oh. And it was, it was, it was everything that you would want a dating experience to be, even Fantastic. though it was short lived, it just made me, it filled me up. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Um, and thank you for all of your dating words of wisdom and knowledge. Um, I've learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> I now, every time I go out to dinner, and if I see someone go up to the bathroom and some other guy get at his phone, I'm going to like throw some real side eye over at him. Just get like, up and walk behind him and see if he's on it and say, do you really get, need to be on that right now? Right? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be my whole thing now. So watch out, people. Um, awesome. Uh, so that was great. Thanks for enlightening me on the world of dating over 50. Um, I'm going th to throw you under the bus, though, before okay. we're done. Go right ahead. What's your happiest dating experience? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, I, I haven't got, thought I got about it. Um, I would imagine it's something with my husband. Nice. Was that Because I would assume that magic was there when you guys first met. And right. Yeah. At first anticipation of that first kiss and all that fun stuff yeah all of that stuff yeah. was you know but i i did i was a very hard person to date i know that um i made people work um you know like to get a piece of this it took a really long time and and again i'm talking like a hundred years ago right but I was the guy in the billboard, so I did have to make people work for it. You know, I didn't give it away. Um, even my husband had to really work hard. But I would imagine, I mean, we've had, we, since being married, since being together, um, we have had some lovely, lovely, magical evenings together. I don't nice. really consider them dating, but there are so many memories where it's like, oh, you know quick one when we were in Hawaii together um, before anyone could ever get married and we kind of were on a beach under the stars and we gave rings to each other Aww. you know that was like a lovely evening uh, committing to each other yeah. in 1980 something you know like wasn't even heard of but we you know so yeah we had a lovely lovely magical evenings but in my head they weren't dates because he was my guy and we weren't dating anymore. Um, anyway, it's not about me. It's about dating after 50. Have we learned everything we need to know, Michael? Or is oh, there anything God, else? Oh, God, no, no. No, good. Because you know what? There is no, because you know, I think if you heard me, I kept saying, for me. Yeah. Because right. there, no, there is no formula to dating. It's, it's, it's unique to the individuals who are involved in it. And um, I don't think there is a right or wrong way. And that's why when the magic happens, it's so great. Because, you awesome. know, it takes a lot to click. So all of our amazing listeners out there, or those of you that are watching us, um, I'm sorry about that. Um, we want to hear about your magical moments. You know, tell us all of your most amazing dating experiences if you are in, out there dating after 50. Or tell us some of your horrible experiences, because I would love to hear those as well. <laughs> uh, Michael, how can they do that? 
You guys could reach us through email at no two gays about it at gmail.com and it's the number two. So no the number two gays about it at gmail.com. You could hit us up on Facebook with the same moniker, no two gays about it. Um, and we are also on Instagram and TikTok. And please go to YouTube and check out our YouTube channel and like and subscribe. And that is you could also find us at no two gays about it. So Come on, join the conversation. We want to hear from you guys. We appreciate we your listening. You we love it when we get comments. Yeah, um, you guys and your comments are amazing. So thank even, you. For even that. when they're shady. Shadier the better, especially yeah. when the shade is being thrown over at Michael. Please send more of those emails because I love reading those. Oh, I um, do too. Yeah. Oh my God, it fills my heart. <laughs> and definitely find us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel because um, we. We want to keep this going and this conversation of the over 50 gay male. Keep that going. Uh, so let us know what you'd like to, us to talk about. Um, whatever. We're here to do that. So great. Thank you very much, Michael. And until next time. Until next time. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Get out there and make that magic. Make some date in life happen. Come on. Bring it on. <laughs>